heard you several times talk about being authentic mm -hmm. and how that is important for relationship building in young adults. And the kicker with authenticity is you can't create it. And, and if you try to create it, then somebody's going to sniff out the meter there and <laughs> right. realize that you're just trying to create this authenticity. Right. So how can young adults, how do young adults sniff out, if you will, that authenticity? How do they know if you're being authentic or not? Well, because I think they have such a high sensitivity to if you're being authentic or not, I think it again comes back to where our hearts are at. And so if it's in our heart truly a deep passion for them, they're going to feel that pretty immediately. And if it's not, or if it's just lip service on a Sunday morning in that one hour that we were talking about, uh, they're going to realize that pretty quickly too. I, I was interesting, I was having a conversation not too long ago and about some of these things. And when it comes to worship, I tend to think, oh, younger adults, they need like the hippest music and you got to dress a certain way and you know all the technology has to be the most amazing. And one of the people, a young adult, was just like, not really. Like, we just want people to get to know us. And I thought, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yet again, that's it. Like, and yeah. you know, I needed that person to teach me that. And hopefully as they did, they realized from my heart, like that's something I wanted to know. And I think when we do those things, hopefully authenticity begins to grow and be trusted by young adults with the church in general. And much like authenticity, the space to be authentic, that, that, that over coffee, that over meal, right. you know, that, that time in which you are yourself and you are asking those heartfelt questions, how do you create that, but you can't create it? Like what, what steps, um, I, like you said, sometimes it's not steps, right? but what tips could you give to say, you know, for somebody who's never done this before, right. what, where do they start of creating that safe space? How do they make that safe space? I think it's as simple, it's as simple and as difficult as just starting with it. So for example, it, let's, let's take the example of there's someone in the church, they want to build a relationship with a young adult. At first, the first time or two or three, maybe that you go for coffee, it may not feel very authentic because you don't know me, I don't know you, that may feel a bit artificial. But once we do that a few times, then, then the artificial nature begins to melt away. And at the same time, you've been showing your intentionality by following up with actions to what you said was important to you. And then beyond that, just like you would with a friend, uh, your, your spouse or your children, like just ask questions. Just start to get to know them. Learn what they love and what they don't like. And so, you know, where do you start? Just get yourself out of your comfort zone <laughs> find someone, and, and I don't even mean find someone again as in a target, I mean, again, it comes back to prayer. But I really believe if we cry out to God and say, God, you know my heart, you know I know I, I wanna be loving these that no one else seems to be loving, I'm absolutely convinced that God will begin to show you probably more than you can imagine uh, and young adults to be in conversation with and to love. And if we start to do that, mm -hmm. From that comes you know, everything else that we just talked about. So again, begin with prayer, but then once, you, once God lays someone on your heart, just go love them, be with them. And that's gonna look different for everyone. Some, some young adults, they don't want you in their face. Other young adults do. Be sensitive to that. Like, again, we can't go in with our preconceived notion. Yeah, there's, there's not a game plan. There's not. There's not a step-by-step, step, do this, then B, then C. The, right. The decision tree on this is giant. Absolutely. It's yes, no, maybe so. Which is why I think when we talk about the church as a whole, it just has to be part of our DNA. I mean, it starts with some programs. It starts with some of those steps we talked about earlier. But at the end of the day, it should get to a point where it's just it's second nature. It's who we are because we're so hungry and love for them. And, and what I hear you saying is, it's an investment. Absolutely. This is, this is not, you know, if, if we're going to have a coffee conversation once a week, once a month, whatever it may be, that's, that's an investment in my time and you. So it's not a monetary investment. Like right. you were saying earlier, it, it doesn't cost money per se to go out and have this conversation. It does cost me my time. Well, and I, which is probably much more expensive in the long run because I think in most churches, and this is exactly what we've done, we hired the staff with our finances to do a certain job, maybe give them even some money for ministry towards young adults, although we don't even do that a lot in the church right. now. But that's way easier mm. than me trading in my time 
and going and investing in somebody one-on-one or a couple right. <laughs> or having yeah. them to our house for a meal. That's, it's just way easier to just throw some money at someone for them to do it than me to sit down and invest. So I think you're exactly right. It's a huge investment on our time and for the church as a whole, but that, that every, we're all doing that together. And, and in this, this relationship that you're building, I, you know, you, as we've been talking, you've shared stories, shared your experiences, shared, you know, I had this conversation or that, you know, this happened. How does sh- story sharing, how does sharing parts of your story, whether it's your faith story or your vocational story or whatever it may be, how does that help create that authentic space? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great question, I, and I'm not sure I know the answers to that um, by any stretch. Uh, one of the things that strikes me as you ask that question, though, is that so often when Jesus was asked a question, he turned around and he answered it, maybe not as directly as we would like, but he, he answered it either with a question or with a story. Mm. So he gives us these, these bizarre stories, you know, <laughs> that the kingdom of God is like a pearl getting lost, you know, or a coin to be found under the sofa or whatever. <laughs> right. And that's fascinating. And sometimes, like, why, would God, why would Jesus do that? And I don't know all the answers, but two things strike me in that. One is when we tell stories, there is something about a story that unlocks our imagination. Mm. We think in ways we didn't think before. And if ever there was a time for us to learn to think differently, it's got to be now and specifically this area with young adults. So as we share our stories, we learn to think in ways we didn't think before. Uh, We learn that there's new paradigms emerging that we weren't aware of before. It it just unlocks our imagination. And again, it doesn't have to be financial stuff. Uh, Just having a new opportunity to do in a different way might be enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, That comes about, I think, when we share our story. Uh, When we hear, oh, that that ministry opportunity reached out, I never would have imagined that. Hearing that story makes me start to think differently. So I think that's one reason why stories create that. The other reason is stories always allow room for questions. Mm. And that's wonderful. There's something so freeing about that, that when we share our stories, I don't have to be the expert with every answer. Uh, Nor, if I'm talking with a young adult then, do they have to feel like uh, they have to give me all the right answers or that they're even being preached to. Mm -hmm. There is space in our story sharing for questions and conversation, which then means exploration. And again, when I think of Jesus, he did that so often uh, with the folks that he interacted with. I mean, when he was with the woman at the well, it was through asking a series of questions that a more authentic relationship developed Mm -hmm. with which then her life was changed. When we tell our stories with each other, it allows for those room, that room for those those questions to occur. And so, yeah, I just think there's something really powerful and wonderful the more we can learn to share our stories with each other. And then even that woman went and shared yeah, her story. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and in sharing that right. story, she... And what happened? Those, all the people she talked with, they started to think differently. Their right. imaginations were open. Then they started asking questions. Could this really be the one? And then they came to find... I mean, exactly. And yeah. so if we could learn to do that as the church today, I just I think that's powerful stuff. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. And I think it's exactly where the Spirit is taking us. Right. And then... And just to have that authentic, intentional investment Absolutely. in young adults is just, it's daunting, it's scary, yeah. it's overwhelming, but it's so vital. And I would add, it's also exciting. Yeah. And one of the things I hear from people is, and this is a scary, overwhelming statement to me, is where the times we're living in right now are as close to me, biblical times as, as we've ever had, meaning there's probably more people today don't know the gospel as close as we've ever had to when the when Jesus walked on earth. On the one hand, that's very scary and daunting and overwhelming, and the things that used to work don't work anymore. On the other hand, when was there ever a more wonderful time for the gospel to be shared in the world with lots of people who didn't yet know that love than when Christ walked the earth and that we have that time now? So for me, I, yes, it's scary, but it's also an amazing opportunity to live into God's love in new and exciting and wonderful ways and to see all these lives be changed in Christ. And for me, I mean, Sign me up. I want to be part of that. Like, I love that stuff. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah.